From ape-like ancestors swinging through trees to AI-powered robots walking among us, our journey has been anything but boring. The evolution of humanoids is a mind-blowing ride across millions of years. So buckle up, because what started with bare feet on dirt paths is now rolling into your home on titanium toes. Let's rewind time, way, way back, to around six million years ago. Back then, our ancestors weren't even close to being human. They were ape-like creatures swinging through forests and scavenging for survival. But something started to shift. Climate change turned dense forests into open woodlands, and that forced them out of the trees. To survive on the ground, they had to change the way they moved. This is when creatures like Sahelanthropus, Ororin, and Ardipithecus showed up. They weren't walking like us just yet, but they were experimenting, standing, balancing, occasionally walking on two legs. These species kicked off the slow but steady transformation from apes to humans. Fossils found in Africa show us these ancient ancestors had a mix of human and ape features, small brains, but changing teeth and hip bones. They are the root of our family tree, the beginning of everything. It's wild to think that we all came from these early experimenters, trying out new ways of moving and living. And once those first awkward steps were taken, evolution had no plans of slowing down. Because walking upright was wasn't just a style choice, it changed everything. Walking on two legs might not seem like a big deal today, but back then, it was revolutionary. Early hominins slowly evolved bodies that could handle upright walking. The changes weren't just in the feet, they were everywhere. The pelvis got shorter and wider to support internal organs. The spine curved to balance the body. Thigh bones angled inward to keep our knees under us. And the feet? Flat arches were out enter strong heels and stiff toes for serious support. Unlike apes, whose legs are better for climbing, humans developed legs designed for striding. We don't waddle or hop, we walk, and we're pretty good at it. Standing still takes very little energy because our bones and ligaments lock into place. Evolution literally reshaped our skeletons just so we could move better and further. That ability gave us the freedom to explore travel, and survive in all sorts of environments. Every time you stand, squat, or take a step, you're using a body designed by millions of years of trial and error. We didn't just stand up, we evolved to go places. Once our ancestors mastered walking, they had their hands free. And boy, did they make use of them. Around 2.5 million years ago, things started to get clever. Species like Homo habilis, began crafting tools from stone. These weren't just rocks, they were carefully chipped, shaped, and used to cut meat or break bones. That's a clear sign of problem solving and the brain power behind it. Speaking of brains, they were getting bigger. Not huge yet, but definitely more powerful. Bigger brains meant better memory, more complex thoughts, and eventually, the rise of language. No one knows exactly when our ancestors started talking, but it probably started with simple sounds and gestures. These early humans also began to form social groups, hunt in teams, and share knowledge. The roots of community, culture, and cooperation began here. It's during this phase that we stopped just reacting to nature and started shaping it. We were no longer just another animal on the food chain. We were becoming something different, smarter, sharper, more adaptable. And once our minds woke up, we weren't just surviving. We were beginning to thrive. After millions of years of wandering, something big happened. Humans started to settle down. The game changer, agriculture. Around 12,000 years ago, early humans figured out how to grow food instead of chasing it. They planted crops, raised animals, and stayed in one place. This shift meant more stable food, more time to think, and bigger communities. Villages became towns, and towns became cities. With stability came culture. People started making art, building tools, and even writing things down. Languages flourished, religions formed, trade routes stretched across continents. Human life wasn't just about survival anymore, it was about ideas, identity, and invention. It wasn't all sunshine, of course. Societies also brought inequality, conflict, and power struggles. 
But the human journey took a massive leap forward. From Mesopotamia to the Indus Valley, from the Nile to the Yellow River, civilizations rose and left their mark. The Homo sapiens we are today were shaped by those who farmed, planned, built, and dreamed. So we've made it from the Stone Age to smartphones, but now a new kind of human is entering the picture. Let's jump ahead, way ahead to the 1700s. Long before Siri and Sophia, a Swiss watchmaker built a robot that played music. It blinked, breathed, and followed its own fingers with its eyes. That was the start of something big, the idea that machines could act like us. These early automata wowed kings and queens, but they were just clever tricks of gears and springs. Fast forward to today, and humanoid robots are no longer a fantasy. Say hello to Sophia, the world's most famous AI-powered robot. She talks, blinks, jokes, and even flirts. Robots now have faces, emotions, and can hold conversations. Some can even draw pictures or mimic your expressions. These aren't just machines, they're designed to feel human. Their creators believe this helps us trust them more. Whether it's a robot helper, an entertainer, or a caregiver, the goal is to make them relatable. And honestly, some of them are a little too convincing. But here's the thing, behind the smiles and smooth skin is serious tech. AI, sensors, and massive computing power are the real stars. And as these humanoids get smarter and smoother, things are about to get very real. Let's meet the modern lineup. Humanoid robots aren't just sitting still anymore. They're doing backflips. Seriously. Boston Dynamics Robot Atlas has become an internet sensation with its jaw-dropping moves. It runs, jumps, and even does parkour. That's not sci-fi, it's engineering magic. Then there's Omeka, the robot with ultra-real facial expressions that can raise an eyebrow, roll its eyes, and even smirk. And let's not forget Digit, the bipedal bot that lifts, walks, and works in warehouses. What powers these robotic wonders? Artificial intelligence. AI gives these machines the brains behind the beauty. With language models like ChatGPT under the hood, robots like Sophia can now answer questions, tell jokes, and even express emotions. Well, kind of. They don't feel emotions, but they can mimic them really well. And that's enough to impress crowds and fool a few hearts. But here's the twist. Many of these robots aren't just gadgets. They're designed to connect, to interact, to feel like they're one of us. Whether that's helpful or a little creepy depends on who you ask. But sometimes, making robots too human has an unexpected effect. Let's take a detour into the strange side of engineering. Ever seen a robot that looks too human? Not human enough to be comforting, but not fake enough to be cute? Welcome to the uncanny valley. It's that weird middle ground where a robot's almost real appearance starts to mess with our brains. Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori first explained it in 1970. The idea? As a robot gets more human looking, our emotional response improves until it becomes just human enough to seem off. You've probably felt it. A robot with lifelike eyes that don't blink right. A smile that's just a bit too stiff. Something about it feels zombie-ish, like a wax figure that suddenly moved. That discomfort is the uncanny valley in action, and it's why robot designers often have to choose. Go fully realistic, or keep things stylized and friendly. Some companies lean into lifelike looks, hoping to build empathy. Others pull back, creating robots with expressive, but clearly artificial faces. Either way, designing a robot that people want to interact with is way harder than it seems. But looks aren't the only challenge. Building a robot that walks, lifts, and learns is a whole other level of difficulty. Let's crack open the nuts and bolts. Here's the truth. Humanoid robots look awesome on camera, but building one that functions like a real person? That's a nightmare for engineers. Sure, sensors and batteries have improved. Today's robots have advanced vision systems, fast processors, and rechargeable power. But the real problem? Actuators. These are the motors that let robots move, like robotic muscles, and they're bulky, complex, and expensive. Even the most advanced humanoids can't match human fluidity. Walking on uneven ground, picking up slippery objects, or opening different kinds of doors, all of that is incredibly tricky. 
most robots still need perfect conditions to perform. That's why many, like Honda's famous Asimo, were retired. Asimo could climb stairs and kick a ball, but only when everything was pre-programmed and predictable. Some companies are now testing lighter, safer actuators or copying biological designs to improve movement. But for now, robot agility is still very limited outside the lab, and that's just the hardware. What about the software that tells the robot what to do? Time to peek under the hood of robotic intelligence. Let's take a tour of the world's coolest humanoids, because the robot revolution isn't coming from just one place. In the US, Boston Dynamics continues to push Atlas toward athletic perfection. Tesla's working on Optimus, promising a general-use humanoid ready for mass production. In Norway, the Anio Gamma wears knit jumpers to look less intimidating. Meanwhile, in China, companies like Unitree, Xpeng, and Engine AI are designing bots that flip, flex, and even patrol malls. Each robot is built with a different mission. Some focus on factory work, Others aim to entertain, assist, or educate. The Walker S from Ubtech, for example, is already being tested on car assembly lines. And robots like Abby from Australia are designed for hospitals and care homes. Colorful, friendly, and full of heart. This isn't just tech for show anymore. From Germany's Neura 4 e one to California's Figure F.02, these machines are being built to enter real-world jobs some walk on two legs, some roll on wheels, and others can swap between both. So, where is all this heading? Experts have mapped out three possible futures for humanoids, and each one's wildly different. Future one consists of small improvements, but nothing world-changing. Robots stay in factories, do simple jobs, and maybe become online celebs like Atlas doing backflips on YouTube. No Rosie the Robot made just yet, but you might get a smart home buddy that follows your dog around. Future 2 comprises moderate leaps in AI and actuators. Now we're talking. Robots can clean kitchens, do laundry, and walk your pets. Still not perfect, but getting very useful. These bots don't look fully human, but they sure know how to help. Future 3 has big breakthroughs across the board. This is the dream. Humanoid robots that cook, clean, organize your life, and maybe even crack jokes. But they're expensive, and you'll probably need to lease one and get insurance. It's rosy with a service contract. All three futures are possible. The tech is racing ahead, but the real test will be how humans and robots live together. Because let's face it, humanoids are no longer science fiction. They're standing right at our door. From ancient bones to blinking bots, the evolution of humanoids shows just how far we've come and how wild the road ahead might be. Will the next chapter have humans and robots working side by side? What do you think the future holds? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.